what actually needs the word of God? Your soul, not your spirit. Renew your mind by the reading of the word. So reading the word of God doesn't help your spirit. It helps your soul. So when we are maturing, that's why the more you mature, you no longer behave like a child. Why? You have adapted a new way of life. So your soul must adapt the way of the spirit in order for you to behave differently in the physical world. You no longer argue. You can be quiet. You can observe Because you have matured in the nature of the spirit. Because the spirit is calm. The spirit speaks less and hears more. God bless you all in the name of Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And uh, I am grateful that the Lord has given us this great opportunity It's super late for some people, but it's just getting started for us. So um, it's going to be short, sweet, and it's going to be amazing. And I am excited to see all brothers tomorrow, all the men tomorrow. It is your time. And uh, God is going to do something special (laughs) in our lives. It's going to be exciting. And... um, Truly, God will elevate us to another dimension and another level. Um, There is something profound that uh, is going to manifest tonight in your spirit. And I desire that you receive it so that the Lord Jesus can be lifted, not only now, but forever. I'm going to be speaking about the mystic of satisfaction. You know, there is an idea in, in Christendom or in the kingdom of God that is not completely accurate. Um, to desire satisfaction is not that they are things that are lacking in your life. It is nature to desire to be satisfied. But what you're satisfying and what, how you're satisfying that need is the issue. You see, when Adam was created in Genesis chapter 2, if you read the creation of, um, the, the, not the creation, but the forming of Adam. Genesis chapter 1, God created him. In Genesis chapter 2, God makes him. Uh, it says that God took the dust of the ground and, you know, formed it and breathed into man and man became a living soul. Right, And uh, you realize something. God creates Adam, but Adam begins to seek satisfaction. Mm. Adam is desiring something, yet Adam has no need. Mm. Adam is not even aware of this need. Mm. So you realize immediately that Adam is seeking something in the animals, Mm -hmm. is seeking something in creation. He's looking for something that would satisfy him. But Adam, why are you in need yet you are made perfect? So there is an idea we have in the church that the presence of God satisfies everything. That's not true. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is why the devil is able to take advantage of people because you don't understand that the desire to be satisfied is human nature, is yeah. creation nature. Yeah. Satan was seeking satisfaction the wrong way and he got kicked out. You see, what he desired to be like, Satan never said, I want to be God. People who say that, they don't understand scripture, nor do they read it. Satan wanted to be like the Most High. Right now, you are striving to be like Jesus. You are striving to be like the Most High. So the desire to be like God is not bad. But the means in which he wanted to satisfy, that was the problem. 
Why he wanted to satisfy that was the problem. Is this making sense? Yes. He never said, I want to be God. The war in heaven wasn't because Satan started a war. No, you're reading that the wrong way. Mm -hmm. The war in heaven, he says, and there was war in heaven. Michael against the devil and the devil against his angel. And they fought for there was no place found for them. It was not a fight to take over heaven. It was a fight, don't kick us out of heaven. Yeah. They lost their place. What they occupied was taken from them. So the battle wasn't for we are going to take over heaven. If you read it carefully, you realize that Satan was trying to elevate to where God is. It means that he was not even in the same realm. Michael was in a higher realm and he saw what was going on and he went to deal with it. If you notice that whole episode, God was not even involved. From the time they did that, Michael fired them. You have no more job. The war was, let me grab. Wow. Please let me stay. Wow. Please don't throw us out. That is what they are fighting for. But all this came from satisfaction. The mystique about satisfaction is that it is nature. It is nature. Can somebody hear me? Yes. What are you trying to satisfy and what can be satisfied and what cannot be satisfied? You need to know how God created you so that you understand what it is that God satisfies. What is it that needs to be satisfied? When Jesus enters your life, what has he brought in order to satisfy? Mm. What is he going to do to you have you not noticed that many that love God have a lot of needs? Yeah. And then we blame it on Satan. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. There will be a need. There will be something going on and we'll blame it on Satan immediately. But you are in the presence of God. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Where does joy come from? And when every part of your being is lacking, how would you know that that area needs to be satisfied? Because man is one, but he exists in three realms. Man is one, but he exists in three realms. Man exists in the spiritual realm. Man exists in the soul realm. And man exists in the physical realm. All these three manifestations of you or your being they all need different things all these three things <laughs> thank you angel of God all these three things need to be satisfied in a certain way. 
the angel of the Lord just spoke to me actually. Amen. And um, this is what he told me just now. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, Satan tricked them, but many don't realize the trick that Satan played on them. Satan came to Mary. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Mm -hmm. From verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, mm -hmm. which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, mm -hmm. but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, mm -hmm. neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods. Notice he did not say you will be God. You shall be as gods. Okay, keep reading. Knowing good and evil. Uh -huh. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes, mm. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, mm -hmm. she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Notice this. Satan promised them spiritual satisfaction but all they did was satisfied the body and the soul he promised them they will be like God but God is spirit but what they were receiving was not going to empower their spirit it was going to empower their soul it was going to give them knowledge and he was going to be good for food. Notice those are the two things that Mary reacted. Um, I said Mary. Eve reacted to. Eve said, wow. This is a tree to be desired. It will make one wise, the soul. Number two, it is pleasant to eat. So she satisfied the stomach and satisfied the soul, thinking that it will empower the spirit, and it did not. When God told Eve and Adam, when you eat of this tree, you will die. Death to God is not going to the grave. Adam and Eve could not understand that because nothing was made to die. But death to God is when you are separated from him, you are dead. Your spirit dries up, and you are done. Yikes. So when the devil said, you shall not surely die, the devil understood that Eve and Eve specifically, Eve was more soulish and physical, but she did not have spiritual maturity. Adam ate the fruit because he did not want to be separated from Eve. Adam never was deceived and he ate the fruit not to be separated from his wife. So he took iniquity also. Yeah. Actually, the book of Timothy tells you that. Yeah. When God comes, he said, it is because of the woman you gave me. People think he was blaming Eve. No, he was saying, I ate it because of her. Not she deceived me. I ate it yeah. because I didn't want to be separated from her. But here's what many are. Uh, oh, I was saying, if you want me to pull it up. Sorry? Yes. But, 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 but watch this. This is very important. Mm -hmm. What is spiritual maturity? Mm -hmm. Who can tell me that? What is spiritual maturity? Let me just, don't worry. There's nothing like being wrong. Mm -hmm. I just want to see where you are. What is spiritual maturity? Hey, you crickets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What is spiritual maturity? So why are you trying to be spiritual mature and you don't know what it is? 
seeing things the way God sees them. Even the devil can see things. No, he's a spiritual being. He can see things and he can choose his perspective. So seeing things is not spiritual maturity. What is spiritual maturity? No, not, sir. Somebody said, listening to God, humbling yourself. Nope. Knowing when things happen in the spirit, no. Nope. Nope. That's just knowledge. Wizards and witches. <laughs> the Bible says the children of darkness are wiser than the children of the light. Right now, a lot of you Christians, if a witch comes after you, will destroy you. A legit witch can. Because you are not aware of spiritual things. But what is spiritual maturity? Let me explain to you. Have you ever seen powerful men and powerful women of God fall? Right? Mm -hmm. Why do they fall? They fall because of one simple thing. Very simple thing. To be powerful doesn't make you spiritually mature. To heal the sick doesn't make you spiritual mature. When we say spiritual maturity, you're thinking your spirit is growing, yet your spirit has never, it was never born. Yeah. It doesn't learn. It's perfect. Yeah. It's the portion of God that is in you. When you're born again, your spirit has been supplanted. So you don't mature your spirit. When people say, I want to be spiritually strong, you don't understand that statement. Your spirit is already strong. In fact, your spirit cannot be separate from, separated from Christ. When we say, I am becoming spiritually mature, what you're saying is that your soul is adapting the nature and the culture of your spirit. Deep. So it is growing in a certain maturity. When you go to school, what is learning, the school or you? Wow. What is learning? It is you. The curriculum has been there. People over the years have gone through the same classes you've gone through. This is why when teenagers grow, they think they are smart. Smarter than you, they understand everything. They don't know you already played that game. Mm -hmm. They think they are now wiser, but you're like, my guy, that is not even life. Mm -hmm. We already passed that. Now we know what our parents were telling us. It was already something they went yeah. through. Yeah. It's true. Even Satan knows who God is. That's not spiritual maturity. To grow in the nature. That is why the Bible says, and those who he foreknew, he also gave the power to what? To be conformed. Wow. To his image. But what is conforming to his image? Because the spirit is already his image. Yeah. Your spirit is not conforming. You. Your spirit is born of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The same way Jesus was conceived is the same way. The only difference is he came with flesh. You already have a flesh, but your spirit is coming straight from the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says you are the seed of God. The word seed is sperma, God's own loins. You came from him. Wow. You can obey somebody but not know what they are doing. That doesn't make you spiritually mature. That just says you trust. Wow. Uh, if this is making sense, let me see some flames. Some flames of fire. Tongues is not spiritual maturity. Tongues are good, not spiritual maturity. Check, check, check. Okay. Okay. 
So when people want to be, when you want to function in faith, okay, what actually needs the word of God? Your soul, not your spirit. Renew your mind by the reading of the word. So reading the word of God doesn't help your spirit. It helps your soul. So when we are maturing, that's why the more you mature, you no longer behave like a child. Why? You have adapted a new way of life. So your soul must adapt the way of the spirit in order for you to behave differently in the physical world. You no longer argue. You can be quiet. Mm. You can observe because you have matured in the nature of the spirit because the spirit is calm. Mm -hmm. you, the spirit speaks less and hears more. Is somebody getting this? Yes. You see, when you're, uh, somebody said alignment of the body's soul and spirit is spiritual maturity. No. Because the moment you come to Christ, you're already aligned. But do you know the ways of the spirit? The reason why there's a disconnect with us and God is we don't know his ways. Mm -hmm. You don't know the ways of the spirit. Yeah. That is our biggest fight. I've seen people fast for a long time, thinking when they come out of fasting, they will see visions. They'll prophesy, nope. We were talking about that last night, right? Nope. Balaam was a wizard, but he was deeply spiritually mature. Wow. <laughs> yeah. He was so mature that he even knew how to set up the children of Israel in order for God himself to punish them by his curse. When he tried to cast them, he could not because he could hear God and God said, you cannot cast them. So he just kept blessing them. <laughs> then he said, wait, there is a way. Let me make them sin. Let's set them up. When they sin, then now the curse will work because he knew God's ways. Can somebody hear me? Yes. So, when you learn the ways of the spirit, the inner man that is in you, mm -hmm. that's spiritual maturity. Because now everything has its right place. Because the overseer, or what we may call the overlord, is your spirit to your being. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. When the presence of God is in your life, doesn't mean instant satisfaction. doesn't mean that the soul will be satisfied and doesn't mean the body will be satisfied. If anything, the craving increases. Mm -hmm. Haven't you ever noticed that the closer you get to God, it seems like you become weaker? <laughs> You start desiring some things that are deep. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? What's going on with me? It's because the presence of God comes to serve you, but you have to know how to take from God and satisfy the areas of your life. And when you don't know this, the devil will do the same thing yeah. he did to Adam. And Eve.
Are you listening to me? Yes. Notice when I sit here to teach you, I'm just teaching you how to do things differently. And you get clarity. And when that clarity truly enters you, you grow. But what is growing is not your spirit, it's your soul. So, Adam is in the garden, but Adam is seeking satisfaction inside of him mm -hmm. that he did not use his lips to speak. He says, ah, I need a partner that will satisfy me. Mm. I need somebody next to me. God is like, okay. <laughs> Your soul is needing, yet you're in the presence of God. Yeah. When you start walking with God and you don't need certain satisfaction in your soul, you're suppressing your soul. And whenever you suppress your soul, it will create problems for you. You will not be able to walk with God properly. Bitterness will be in your heart. Yeah. Disappointment will be in your heart. Yeah. Your soul will not be light yeah. because the soul is the servant of the spirit. Yeah. And if the soul is not taken care of, the soul cannot be yeah. a good servant to the spirit. Sure. Think sure. about it like this. If you work for somebody that mistreats you, yeah. doesn't speak to you well, you will quit that okay. job and go and find another job. Mm -hmm. If you persevere in that job, you'll be so stressed that you'll not even be good to yourself. Yeah. Some of you, you've been taught you don't need a nice house. That's a lie. Why did God give David a palace? You take what Jesus came to do, you forget Jesus is God. He came to do something and to bounce. You, you have many years to live here to serve a certain purpose. All I care is about going to heaven. No, that was what God wanted is for us to spend eternity with him. And God ensured it by sacrificing his son for our sake. So God has settled the heaven thing. We want heaven because we don't want hell. But God ordained heaven so that we can be with him forever. You see maturity. We are escaping hell because we don't want to be tormented. But God created heaven for us because he wants us to be with, with him. Mm -hmm. So if you just want to be saved because you're afraid of hell, you're not spiritually mature. Yeah. You don't get the plan. Yeah. It means you are devising a way out for yourself, but you're not taking God's way out. That I want to be eternally with God who created me. Mm -hmm. Not I don't want to be in fire, in darkness. Yeah. away. From, mm -mm. That's, true. That's a wrong purpose. You're, yeah. you're trying to cheat your way into heaven. It doesn't work like that. So your soul being satisfied is necessary. When the Bible speaks about thirsting, the Bible says, blessed are they that thirst for righteousness. Righteousness is what your soul needs. Right standing with God. Your spirit is already right standing with God. Your spirit is not righteous, it's holy. <laughs> Isaiah 58 verse 11. Are we there? Almost. Isaiah 58, 11. Amen. And the Lord shall guide thee continually mm -hmm. and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. One more time. And the Lord shall guide thee continually mm -hmm. and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. One more time. 
and the Lord shall guide thee continually mm -hmm. and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Listen to what is happening there. God wants to satisfy your soul. God wants to satisfy your soul. Your soul needs it. If God cannot satisfy your soul, you will be broken. Abraham had everything. Yeah. No demon possessed Abraham. Abraham had everything, but he was not satisfied. The only thing was going to satisfy him. The Bible says Abraham sought a city that was not created in man, with man's hand. Abraham was visited by God. God tells me, Abraham, you, I will make you so great. He said, God told him, I will give you anything. <laughs> Abraham said, God, you've given me everything. I don't have a son. That was a satisfaction that he was pursuing. Yes, I have silver. Yes, I have gold. When I die, who's going to take over this thing? Eliezer is going to take over this. And Eliezer is not even my own son. He's my servant's son. But I am grooming him to take over what is mine that you gave me. I am not satisfied. No. You want to have children because you need satisfaction. Yeah. You want to be blessed because you need satisfaction. Yeah. Where there is no satisfaction, there is no peace. Where there is no satisfaction, there is no calm. Yeah. Where there is no satisfaction, there is torment. This is why many of you find yourself in alcohol, in drugs, because you're trying to satisfy yeah. something that can only be satisfied by God. But when we say God can satisfy you, yeah. we are always aiming to the spiritual things, yet it is not. It is the physical thing. How did you get to a place whereby you need to drug yourself? You need alcohol in order to forget your troubles. Yeah. Those troubles is a thirst. Yeah. Jesus needs to visit you yeah. and solve those things. Amen. Because if you don't get that money in your yeah. account and you try everything you can and you cannot, you will result into drinking yeah. so that you can forget. It's you result into anxiety, so you have to smoke some stuff in order yeah. for you to calm down. Yeah. Then when it runs out tomorrow, you'll be looking for a card. So you'll be spending money for you to be calm. Yet Jesus gave you satisfaction, free 99. Yeah. For free. Yeah. But because you don't understand that God has made these things available for you, you can't even pray to ask God for these things, and when you ask, you don't ask the right way. So you're suffering yeah. for something that God made available for you. Yeah. Alcohol band-aid. Yeah. Antidepressant band-aid. Yeah. You are just patching yourself. But when the going goes, the patch will come off. You'll be back down flatter than you've ever been. Yeah. It's true. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not need anything. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Do you know what that means? Animals don't want to lie down in green pastures. That's what you eat. But he's saying I will have plenty. I will be relaxing on the green. Yeah. When you read this, you don't understand what he's saying. He makes me to lay down in green pastures. Wow. Remember, animals seek green pastures to eat. That is why uh, 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 shepherds migrate all the time. They move looking for greener pastures. That's why when people want to go to another city, what do we say? I'm going there hoping there is what? Greener pastures, meaning new opportunities. Yeah. You don't go look for grass so you can eat. Remember, this is a reference to us. But speaking of animals, because animals don't know where good things are. It is the Lord that leads them. They are shepherd that leads them to that place. <clears throat> He's saying not only will I take care of your physical needs, but he will lead you also by still waters. What is still waters? 
a place whereby you will be, you're, you know when you're thirsty, ah, you are tormented. Yeah. You even say, if just something cold will just. <laughs> so God is not only satisfying your physical aspect of life. That's what the green pastures represent. If you have the green pastures, but you don't have still waters, you will suffer. My heart desires you like when a deer is desiring water. Not my spirit. You see, when you're satisfied by God, even when God is building you up, you'll be comfortable. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You'll be looking forward to greater things that God will do. Amen. Do you know what shows that your life is about to progress? Amen. When you start desiring greater things, knowing that God can do it for you. Yeah. Not because you saw your neighbor and you envied. Amen. You just went ahead of time. So wow. you've created a thirst that wow. not ordained by God, that is not ordained by God. Ooh. Now you have to look for evil means in order to satisfy it. Oh my God. Nice. Let me get some, some ones if you can hear me. This is good. Let me just get number one if you can hear me. Mm. Let me get some number ones if you can hear me. Yesterday I was prophesying to a man and two men actually had the same exact issue. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I told, and after I ministered to him prophetically, what did I say? I said, guys, when you want to get married, even if somebody loves you from the moon and back and you love them too, get on your knees, mm -hmm. pray, mm -hmm. so that you don't get a knife instead of a wife. So that you don't get uh, 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 um, uh, uh, somebody that will whoop you all night as a husband. Yeah. He's become a spiritual husband, tormenting you, beating you, mistreating you, yeah. abusing you. Yeah. Because sometimes we can want something so bad, but we don't know what will satisfy us. We think we do. Can you guys hear me? Yes. These are things, uh, children of God, that you have to know. If you don't, you're in trouble. Yeah. What? satisfaction do you need mm. do you want a good life because you've looked at other people and you think that your life is so bad mm. then you don't grow in the maturity of what God has given you can somebody hear me So, as a child of God, what are you working on that is holding you back? Let me read you another verse. Or Musa will read for you another verse. Or somebody else. Psalms 65, verse 4. 
Psalm 65 mm-hmm. and verse, verse 4. 4. And it reads, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. What is goodness? <laughs> Psalms 145, verse 16. Psalms 145, 16. Auntie Betty, read this one. Amen. I'm actually about to finish. Psalms 145, and verse 16. Amen. Yes. Thou openest thine hand and mm. satisfiest the desire of every living thing. Mm-hmm. One more time. Thou openest thine hand and mm. satisfies the desire of every living thing. One more time. Thou openest thine hand mm. and satisfies the desire of every living thing. One more time. Thou openest thine hand mm. and satisfies the desire of every living thing. God satisfies the desire of every living thing. If you don't take care of your desires before God, if you don't allow God to take care of your desires, life will not be easy. Needs are important, but desires of the heart God wants the living to be satisfied. You can take care of everything in your life. You can have all the money, but your heart is not satisfied. So, What, how do you position that? Let me show you an example of your body's needs, right? Your body needs to eat. You don't think that to be evil, right? You want to eat good food. Is that not true? Yeah, Yeah, sometimes uh, the best comfort is good food. You know, it's just truth. But you don't see that and look at it like it's satanic. Because that's what, the body needs. Yeah. You don't feed it. Yeah. And the body has desires to, man, a steak will be really good today. <laughs> and you can mold your body to have appetite for different things. You know what? Uh, meat is not good for me. I'm going to be doing salads, but I'll find the most delicious way to maintain this. Then your body adapts. Now you start craving what? Salads. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. So taste can be altered. Mm. But you will still not ignore what your body wants. Yeah. Neither do you think it to be evil. Deep. Why does sex become evil? Yet sex is human nature. Mm-hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Your desire to be intimate is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. Not all uh, interesting dreams are spiritual husband. (laughs) Somebody didn't hear me. Yeah, not all uh, sexual dreams are demonic. That's foolishness when somebody says that. That's a lie. Every man, this is for men, Every 14 days, your body will release when you are even subconscious sleeping. It doesn't mean a demon visited you. Your body may even make you dream something for that function to happen. That doesn't mean a spiritual wife visited you. Some mermaid from the sea visited you. (laughs) You know, we have spiritualized some things that are not spiritual. It's just the body doing its thing. Women also can dream such things. 
Now, there is a frequency that you can tell this is demonic. But notice, it becomes solely to satisfy the urge, right? Mm -hmm. But not the building of anything. Yeah. Demonic. But it's a normal function. God made it so, in Africa we say so sweet, right? Mm -hmm. That even your body, if you have not regulated yourself, you might position yourself in a bad place to find yourself doing things you shouldn't be doing. So there are certain things that are not what people have made it to be. Simply we don't understand how the body works and what it needs. Your iron will be down. You will say, I rebuke spirit of uh, iron deficiency. No, go eat well. <laughs> go get some iron in you. Go get some minerals in you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, ju I just, I just, I am just feeling like my energy is going down. Maybe your vitamin, is it B? B12. B B12. B12 is lacking. <laughs> Might need to start popping some multivitamins. Your body is just telling you. Mm. Not just, hey, spirit of, uh, <laughs> come out. <laughs> Yet oh the, even demons are wondering what is happening. Who is coming out? <laughs> what is this demon that is not in our list? <laughs> they are asking, do you know that one? We don't know him in hell. Who is that? Because you don't maintain your body, you create problems that the devil takes advantage of. Hello. Get good nutrition. Most of the things that you want, you won't want them anymore. The desire of your body is to work perfectly, run perfectly, rest properly, Amen. process things the right way. Yeah. Right? Your soul may desire for you to do something to satisfy itself because it's broken. You find yourself wow. gaining weight you don't need to gain. Then your body starts to break down. Mm. You see, all these things is because there is conflict yeah. between your body and even your soul. Mm. Okay, the soul will say, maybe if I inhale some smoke, it will calm me down. Yes, the soul will calm down for a few minutes, but the body's lungs will be destroyed. You'll be in the hospital. Now you are in distress again. So if you are not regulated by the Spirit of God, wow. what the soul wants will destroy the body, and what the body wants will destroy the soul. Wow. Is this making sense? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that you need the gym, but your, your, your soul will be like, ah, running all that time. It even makes your body less, yet your body doesn't question what you want. But the soul will say, but I don't want to do that. Then when you see one up popping out, your soul is like, yeah, yeah, yeah we look good. <laughs> How many people were so naturally so beautiful? Naturally so beautiful. They went and did their face now, the, the, thinking they will satisfy their soul. And they still didn't feel beautiful. Yeah. 
The self-image is destroyed, not because you don't, you, God made you so wonderfully beautiful, right? You go look at yourself in the mirror, you can't see that beauty because the soul is messed up. People will tell you, you're beautiful, you're this, you're handsome, you're this, but you can't see it. Because the soul now is telling you, go and do this yeah. and we will become better. Then you enter into a rabbit hole where you continually keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. Before you know it, you can't even be recognized because yeah. you are trying to alter something that cannot be satisfied by the outside. Mm -hmm. Your vision is distorted because your soul is not healthy. It's not being satisfied. What it needs to run properly, it's not. So it's now starting to choose solutions. Wow. Imagine going to the hospital, but you're telling the doctor, hey, give me this shot, give me that. Wow. Medicine that is supposed to be good for you, but if it's not what you need, will become poison to you. So, the body needs to be healthy. And when your body is healthy, it is easy for the body to be the servant of the soul. Spiritual maturity is revealed by you eating healthy. Because you are making sure the body that will be used for God's glory is ready to be used. You make sure you are healthy. Yeah. You make sure you eat right. You make sure you sleep right. You make sure you do all these things in order for you to be ready to do what God wants you to do. Some of you, you want to serve God, but you can't even stand for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Some of you want to serve God, but you're always so weak because the last you divorced the gym long time, you can't even breathe proper. There's so many health issues that could have simply be fixed if you ate right. Then you're saying, Lord, if you just heal me, I will praise you. I will worship you. I will tell everybody. But even if he heals you, you will still eat unhealthy. When you're broken, you think you need money to do God's purpose. Mm -hmm. Yet you only need faith. Your soul is in the wrong place. Lord, send me to the world. is like I'm sending you to the gym. I'm sending you to the grocery store. Satan can just take an opportunity, send a sickness to you. Your immune system can't fight the devil. You see, when your immune system is healthy, if they, Satan wants to send you a sickness, it cannot work because the body has the ability to fight it. If the enemy tries to send it spiritually, your spirit is strong enough to fight it. But if the spirit is strong and the body is weak, you will fall sick. Don't just lose weight to look good. That's good. Lose it so that God can use you for a long time. Amen. So that your mind is clear to capture what the Holy Spirit is saying. When you eat wrong, your brain doesn't even work right. My thoughts are just so cloudy. You start eating right. Man, my memory is so sharp. So you imagine you're eating things that your memory can't even work properly, your, natural, your brain can't even process, but you're expecting to hear God's voice. You haven't prepared the vessel that needs to be used. The soul. Why do you read the word of God? so that your mind can be renewed. The mind is the most active part of the soul. 
the mind is the most active part of the soul. The mind is the most active part of the soul. You have the conscious mind and you have the subconscious mind. If your subconscious mind is messed up, if your subconscious mind is corrupted, all your physical decisions will be bad. Your perspective will be messed up. Meditation of the, on the word of God, what it does is this. It reprograms the subconscious. Your physical and emotional reaction becomes based on what is in you, in your subconscious, not what you're trying to process. You need muscle memory to deal with things of the soul. Can somebody hear me? Anyone that tells you you don't need friends is a liar. Mm -hmm. A human being was not created to be by themselves. Yes. Even Jesus needed 12 amigos. Amen. He was God. Moses needed Joshua. Mm -hmm. Elijah needed Elisha. Yeah. So when you read the word of God, your need for friends will be, no, let me get good friends. Amen. Not people who are like friends, but they only spew negative things. It's affecting me. Mm -hmm. Let me get good friends. So you are now not just choosing friends, you are choosing quality friends. Mm -hmm. How many people have been in bad relationships? If you've been in a bad relationship, uh, type number one. <laughs> How many people have been in terrible relationships? Let me see one finger. One finger in the air. <laughs> 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 Okay, that's good. When people say Holy Ghost ordained friends, there's no such thing. <laughs> I'll explain to you in a second. <laughs> okay, now watch this. Let me ask you a simple question. I'll start with you, right? Do you have a mic? Okay, okay. No, go, go next to Auntie Betty. We need you to be... So let me ask you, yes. uh, I won't ask you details, but just give me yes or no answers, right? Okay. Was the guy a bad guy? No. Uh, so how did it end? Um. Did things go well or bad? They didn't match up. They didn't match up? No. But you love this person? Yes. But things didn't match up? No. Why didn't they match up? Differences of opinions, maturity. Okay, but past any experience. Everyone being in a relationship knows that you will never agree on everything. So what was the problem? Is this where I hit the yes? Or the no? Huh? Is this where I hit the yes or the no? Sorry? Is this where I say yes or no? No, I don't or know. I'm just asking details. you. Okay, let me help you. Okay. You chose bad relationships because you are bad. Deep calleth unto the deep. You chose the evil that is inside of you. You brought it out. I received you will say, oh, that person wasn't good to me. No, you are not good to you. This is facts, Papa. These are the facts. <laughs> it 
it came out. Then you went through a bad thing. Then you realize uh, I would never be in a situation that there's this. Then you should ask yourself, why was I attracted to this? Yeah. You see, the thing is you put blame on the other person, but it is you. You chose them too. Why were you attracted to that thing? Why? Yeah. It is because what was inside of you was calling for that. Yeah. Then when you went through the bad thing, you realized, ah, this thing I like is not good. Some people learn and they do, some people don't. Yeah. You do a repeat. You need to go 10 times before you get it. Papa and my spirit was doing the Harlem Shake. <laughs> I'm just being honest. You'd be like, ah, that person used to be abusive. They were always abusive. You didn't pick it up because your desire for them was greater than their character. You valued the, the idea of being with somebody, not the character of the person that you're going to build life with. You had no understanding of where you're going, so you did not know who you will need to go with you. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there a bad relationship? No, you just paired yourself badly. Yeah. Because that person that you broke up with, yeah, they are probably married with somebody. That's true. And there are no issues. That's true. <laughs> Moved on. And some also they never fixed what you both had the problem with, and they are still. In the streets. Facts. That's so good. <laughs> yep. Jesus. Somebody says some are nice and some show you a different side when you, they win your heart. No, they were always that. Yep. They deceived you and you Did fell you for it because deception yep. is in you. Hey. The Bible says it like this. This is how the Bible says it, right? Mm -hmm said, in the last day, there will be so much deception that if it were possible, even the very elect will be deceived. Can you find that scripture for me, Musa? Matthew 24, 24. Yes. For there shall arise false Christs and prophets, and false prophets. Notice, he says false Christ, Christ and false prophet. What does he mean? Christ means anointed one. There will be false anointed people, and there will be false spokesmen of God. So to be anointed doesn't mean you speak for God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So he gave two different people. And shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible. In they, so much that if it were possible. They shall deceive the very elect. They shall deceive the very elect. So if you've been walking with God and you got deceived by a certain pastor, by a certain person, by a certain thing, check your walk with God. It was not them, it was you. The elect cannot be deceived. Uh-oh. Trouble. Anyone that has met Jesus... Mm -hmm. cannot fall for a fake Jesus. True. Anyone that has been in the presence of the Holy Spirit cannot fall for false manifestation. Yeah. That is why you find that, you see, these uh, guys that come on, on Facebook, IG, YouTube, they message you guys, oh, uh, beloved child, I was praying for you. Message me on WhatsApp right now. And you message and then they say, beloved, God has said this, God has said this. They send you some scriptures and then they tell you, send a seed to this place. You believe them and you send your money, then you realize they stopped communicating. Then you say, ah, but that's not Prophet Lovi. Notice what happened. Mm. Those people who fall for that are people who have never sat down to listen to me. There are people who simply have watched me prophesy to people, yeah. cast out demons, heal yeah. the sick. So their need yeah. has surpassed Deep. their desire to know 
who is this ministering to me and by what power are they doing it? Who is this man? Such kind of people don't care where the solution is coming from, even if it's coming from hell. As long as they get what they want. Not who is speaking. Let me investigate a little bit. What is this about this person? They even fall for beloved. I don't call anyone beloved. That's not a line I use. There's one page on Facebook I saw with over 20,000 yeah. group, a group with 20,000, and these people said, there's a miracle coming for you today. Money is coming to you with all these pictures. And he says, Prophet Lovi, New York, or Prophet Lovi, Florida, or something. Plenty of people. Yet me, I'm telling you, I only have one Facebook page. My page is verified on, on, on Instagram. Uh, my TikTok has over 700,000 people. I say this all the time, right? And I'm working on verifying the Facebook very nearly. But Amen. you know what? It doesn't even matter because even on yep. IG, where I have a blue tick, mm -hmm. <laughs> people still message me and say, Ah, prophet, you messaged me. I'm just making sure it's you. <laughs> you go on the website, it shows you exactly what my page is. Why are, they following, why are they falling for it? They want the idea yeah. of what they want, not the God who is speaking. Yeah. True healing is in the word of God, Amen. not just prayer. Amen. The prayer can bring you solution, right? Yeah. How are you going to maintain it? Even the guys who are tricking you, they are not even wise enough. Let me study this man. They just know if I say yep. this, these people are hungry yep. for prophecy. If I just do this, they'll fall for it. Yet I've said I won't ask you for money. One uh, I saw today, I was sent uh, screenshots of the person uh, had a cash up with the woman's, with a woman's face, said, yeah, send it through this, and we need 500 to buy some equipment to go and pray in the mountains. Ah. So they took pictures of speakers and some mixers. But look at our church. Do I look like I need those things? They just, they said, this is my backup account, my secret account, and people fall for it. It's because they are hungry for a solution, not yeah. caring where it's coming from. So hear me and hear me well. If the word of God is not in you, if the word of God is not in you, anything Satan will present you will run with. You will do external things, not internal things in order for you to get to where God wants you to get to. When the word of God is inside of you, you start desiring things that come from God because you know that's what will satisfy your soul. Amen. The Bible says money answers all things. But there are people who would kill for money. God doesn't want us to kill for money. There are people who steal for money. There are people who lie for money. But God wants us to have money. And he says the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money is the root of all evil. When you love something so much, you will ignore what you need. Mm. Wow. So to build up your inner man, Amen. the word of your soul, sorry, you need the word of God. Start knowing what God wants you to have. 
then you will pray with a genuine heart. Amen. Oh, God doesn't mind me having a house. Oh, Father, according to your house, to, according to your word, let me have that house. According to your word, let me be perfected within so that I can choose a partner that will have what I have with me. When I see them, I will recognize them because what is in them is also in me. You start to pray with intelligence. If you have some unresolved things with your parents that you realize that you cannot sort out with them, you look at the word of God, what does it say? Yeah. If they will not listen, treat them like an unbeliever. You know that they don't know any better. Yeah. So you say, you know what? Their carnality made them do this. I let this go. You will do self-care within. Yeah. Deep. Venting doesn't fix the soul. Mm -hmm. It releases pressure for a little bit. Tomorrow the pressure will build up again. Yeah. I just need somebody to talk to. Mm. Tomorrow, if you are the only one talking, not being fed, tomorrow the pressure will increase again. You will look for somebody else to mm. talk to. Wow. It's true. You have to actively yeah. correct the soul. Yeah. The Bible goes as far as to say we don't even know what we need to pray for. The soul is messed up. The heart is deceitful above all things. So you may be walking with God, but you have deceived yourself in a lot of areas of your walk with God. Everything is not shadabada bada bada karaba shakataba. If you are empty up here, shada bada bada won't help you. Because when you shada bada bada, ba, you utter mysteries. Those mysteries must enter you. Yeah. God still has to speak. Yeah. If you don't have the ability to process or to capture it, your shada bada 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 ba, will turn into yabada ba, do nothing. <laughs> you have nothing, you'll still be empty. Is this making sense? Yes. What needs work is your soul and your body. So tonight, when you lay down in your bed or this day, when you go about your day, Ask yourself that question seriously, genuinely. Question yourself, man, what is all this about? Yeah. Why am I doing the things I'm doing? In light of the word of God, where am I? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, make sure you do the work. Uh, make sure that you sincerely investigate. Um, you investigate um, your heart in light of the Word of God, and excuse me. And in that way, you'll be able to cure anything that is. Um, is going contrary to what God has put for you and inside of you. This is a genuine desire of God for you and for me. And I believe that where God is about to take us, where God is about to lift us, it will take to fix these things because these are not spiritual problems. Spiritually, you're already so intact, you just don't have a complete idea of it. When that part of your life becomes like complete, you realize that there was a problem spiritually that was conflicting with what was coming from God. 
So if God says you are going to be great, there will be nothing that will resist that greatness. Because if your spirit says yes, your soul even says yes, but you're about to die, then it doesn't manifest. Right? If your body says yes, but your soul says no, it cannot manifest. So make sure that these areas are addressed. Amen. Then when you pray, you will pray in light of what God wants. You see, when the Lord Jesus was in the garden, he was so stressed. He was hurting because his soul was heavy. The Lord Jesus went on his knees and he prayed and he said, Father, if it is your will, let this cup of suffering pass. His spirit was ready to do it. The body will go anywhere where the mind goes, but the mind was labored. If you are willing, Lord, not what I want. Then the Bible says, and the angels came to comfort him. It's going to be okay. It was a hard thing. It was not a spirit thing. It was not a body thing. May genuine healing come upon you. May genuine transformation come upon you. May it be genuine, may it be pure, may it be real, genuinely. Don't hide this thing, you know. The biggest thing we do is we just hide behind scripture. No, scripture is supposed to open us up, it's supposed to make us naked, it's supposed to operate on us. Let's not be those people that you say, uh, how are you, uh, uh, highly favored. <laughs> yet you know that you are hurting inside. Yeah. Let it be genuine yes, that you get to a place whereby the present suffering do not compare to the glory Amen. that you are genuinely excited to go through your tribulations Amen. because you are beyond them in here. My body may be broken, but I am not broken. Amen. I was talking to uh, Luke earlier and I was showing, we were going through my fights and my sparring sessions and and uh, I was showing him one sparring session where somebody, actually, this is just what I do. If I am fighting and you get me with something like clean, instead of shrinking, uh, I actually, my aggression increases and my alertness increases and I will press you. I will push you like you have never been pushed. So many Christians break. You get hit, ah, now you are panicking, you can't fight anymore. Yeah. It should never be like that. You break too easily. Somebody insults you, you break. Satan attacks you, you break. People speak against you, you break. We are breaking too easily. It ought not to be like that. C can you guys hear me? Yes. If you can hear me, push one, 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 one. Huh? How do you break? How do you you don't break easily? It, it very simple actually. You can go farther than you think. You have to know that, and you have to know that you're more than your body. Those two things are very important. When you're in the gym, have you ever worked out before? What kind of workout have you done? Basketball. Have you ever felt like you can't make a shot and you felt like you couldn't do it and then you throw it and it just happens? What was the difference? You are still tired, but you made it and you all of a sudden you had more energy. So you get drained because of emotions. Mm. You dwell on the failure. Hey. <laughs> you dwell on the pain. Oh. It's Yet it's just temporary. Mm -mm. Does that make sense? Yes. 
Like when you bump your toe, you're like, then after it hurts, then you realize, oh yeah, oh, yeah. that was bad. Deep. It only lasted one minute. Yeah. You have to remember that you are created to adapt. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So if you persevere more than a minute, that pain, you will subdue it. You will surpass it. Wow. Does that make sense? Yes. When you're hungry, you don't die. Food may be so far, but you look for it and finally you eat. But some of you, when you're hungry, it's like the world has ended. That means that your stomach is controlling you. But if you subdue it for one hour, two hours, three hours. <laughs> Got a surprise, sir. Why are you wearing black and you're coming from behind me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is cool. Yay. Have you seen that meme of somebody holding people like in the back, like that shadow thing? <laughs> I almost rebuked you. <laughs> uh -uh. Oh, this is cool. Do you remember your first uh, subscriber? Your hundredth? Wow. Or your one thousand subs? No, I can't. This is Okay, okay. Man, this is so cool. This is so amazing, wow. That's amazing, that's really cool. Oh, look at that. Yay. That's nice. Wow, this is cool. This is cool, this is really cool. Over a hundred thousand touched Amen. on YouTube. This is cool. This is really nice. Wow, man, I'm thankful to you all. This really, Amen. this really is. This this is God. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all for doing this and helping that the word of God will truly spread Amen. to the four corners of the earth. And it would not be possible without you. So I'm grateful. This is nice. Amen. This touched me. Uh, this is good. Uh, we, we have to f put it somewhere, huh? Amen. Uh, this is amazing. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Musa, next time you come like that, I will Bruce Lee you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Ne next is for Amelie. God is good. God is good. Anyway, let's finish. Remember tomorrow, uh, uh, um, tomorrow, uh, what is it called? Um, man cave. Man cave, it's a man's world. Tomorrow will be amazing. So all the men come through. It will be powerful at 4 p.m. I'll be here and uh, God is empowering you for the coming year. Amen. So this is our New Year service for men. So no matter what, don't miss it. And then, um, what else did I want to say? Yeah, that's about it. Amen. Father, bless your people. Thank you for all the subscribers and all the people that you have allowed me to touch, O oh Lord, by your word. Lord Jesus, do a new thing in their lives. Elevate them, Father, to the place that they can know you, that they can walk with you, and they can move with you, doing the impossible for your glory. Father, there are so many things that we have spiritualized that were not spiritual. Thank you for giving us wisdom and understanding to fix them. May your name be glorified, O oh Lord, that you who lives in us, you are with us. You will never leave us nor forsake us, and you will bring us to the place of fulfillment. May your name be glorified now and forever, my Lord and my God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. I will see you soon. Shalom. Amen.